Okay, next property is of a summation. The summation if x of n dtft is going to be x of e raised to j omega, then y of n is equal to summation k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x of k the dtft is going to be y of e raised to j omega the x of e raised to j omega divided by 1 minus e raised to minus j omega plus pi x of e raised to j omega actually here is j naught continuation equation is summation k is equal to minus into plus infinity delta of pi minus 2 pi k then with the proof is going to be we know that the summation is the reverse process of the difference differencing then the summation operation on x of n yields y of n the difference whereas the difference operation on y of n yields the x of n what it is indicating that our x of n equation is going to be y of n the difference the uh, of the previous value that is y of n minus of y of n minus 1 that is going to be x of n therefore for this equation we will be taking the dtft on both sides so we will be getting as x of e raised to j omega is equals to y of e raised to j omega minus e raised to e raised to when the dtft n minus 1 is there this this shift operation is going to be taken as e raised to minus j omega into y of e raised to j omega if it is of if i am going to consider of y of n minus 2 means what you will be writing the equation <coughs> as e raised to instead of 1 you here you will be writing as e raised to minus 2 j omega y of e raised to j omega like this the equation you have to write then from this equation I want what is our y of e raised to j omega that what I can do for that I will be taking y of e raised to j omega from these two terms. So what is the lifting part it will be ready as 1 minus e raised to minus j omega. Therefore I, I can write uh, the equation in terms of y of e raised to j omega as that is equals to x of e raised to j omega divided by 1 minus e raised to minus j omega. That take us uh, that as equation one. Then from equation one, it cannot be determined what is our e raised to j zero. So that to get to, we we are going to add an impulse to the account for a non-zero average value that is x of k to get the exact relationship. Okay. Now we will be doing of that y of e raised to j omega is going to be equal to x of e raised to j omega divided by 1 minus e raised to j omega plus pi into x of e raised to j omega delta of omega where omega is varying from minus pi to plus pi where the first term assumed to be a 0 for omega is equal to 0 but since our uh, y of e raised to j omega is a periodic with the period 2 pi this is we are already come across 2 pi into m divided by capital n means it's a going to be a periodic of a period 2 pi based on that condition we can write that y of e raised to j omega is equal to x of e raised to j omega plus e raised to j omega plus x of j omega summation k varying from 0 minus infinity plus infinity delta of omega minus 2 pi k this is the periodicity property based on that i can write the equation this is about the summation next is of a convolution property if x of n dtft is going to be x of e raised to j omega and y of n dtft y of e raised to j omega then z of n is equals to x of n convolution with y of n the dtft is going to be z of e raised to j omega is equal to x of e raised to j omega into y of e raised to j omega. What is the conclusion you can tell uh, when compared with the Fourier transform? It is uh, giving the information that the uh, time domain in convolution it is equal uh, when I go for DTFT it's going to change the frequency in terms of multiplication. That's what we have to prove now. 
okay that is the proof is going to be x of e raised to j omega is equal to summation summation n a varying from minus infinity to plus infinity x of n e raised to minus j omega n then y of e raised to j omega is equal to summation n uh, equal to minus infinity to plus infinity y of n e raised to minus j omega n therefore z of e raised to j omega is going to equal to summation n is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity z of n e raised to minus j omega n i can substitute for z of n as the equation as x of n convolution with y of n x of n convolution y of n e raised to minus j omega n now we will be substituting what is the equation for convolution that is summation uh, varying from l equals to minus infinity plus infinity x of l y of n minus l this is the basic equation of a convolution equation then remaining part as it is return e raised to minus j omega n and summation term as it is then interchanging for the summation now observe here uh, this summation is taken first that is summation uh, a l varying from minus into plus infinity x of l and this summation this side summation rem varying from minus into plus infinity y of n minus l this is y of n minus l into e raised to minus j omega n then put n minus l is equal to this value we are putting some other variable that is n minus l is equal to m then z of e raised to j omega is going to be changing summation l varying from minus into plus infinity x of l summation m varying from minus into plus infinity y of m e raised to minus j omega instead of n I can write as taking L this side means M plus L A will be getting. Then summation L uh, varying from minus into plus infinity X of L. This L term is taken here that is E raised to minus J omega L. Then one more summation that is summation M varying from minus into plus infinity Y of M E raised to minus J omega M. This is nothing but our X of E raised to J omega. Yes then this whole term is nothing but our y of e raised to j omega this is what z of e raised to j omega therefore convolution in time domain is equivalent to the multiplication in the frequency domain that is about the convolution property next property is of modulation if x of n dtft is going to be x of e raised to j omega and y of n dtft is going to be y of e raised to j omega then z of n is equals to x of n into y of n the dtft is going to be z of e raised to j omega is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi into x of e raised to j omega modulation y of e raised to j omega this symbol indicates the periodic convolution there is a difference between convolution and also a periodic convolution there is nothing but a modulation we will tell the proof is going to be first we will write the basic equation for x of e raised to j omega that is summation n varying from minus into plus infinity x of n e raised to minus j om omega n similarly for y of e raised to j omega and also for the z of e raised to j omega now we will substitute what is our z of n what is the z of n is taken x of n then y of n that is x of n y of n and then remaining as it is that is e raised to minus j omega n now we know that x of n equation the basic equation is going to be 1 divided by 2 pi integration minus pi 2 plus pi x of e raised to j beta into e raised to j beta n d beta now z of e raised to j omega is equal to summation here the y of n written as it is observe here we substituted for the x of n equation now 
that is nothing but 1 divided by 2 pi integration minus pi 2 plus pi x of e raised to j beta into e raised to j beta n d beta e raised to minus of e raised to j beta summation again here summation varying from n is n varying from minus into plus infinity y of n and these two added and here it is written as e raised to minus j omega minus beta into n into d beta then this whole equation is nothing but 1 divided by 2 pi integration minus pi 2 plus pi x of e raised to j beta as it is and this whole equation is nothing but our basic equation that is y of e raised to instead of omega here is of omega minus beta that's it changing therefore i can write as y of e raised to j omega minus beta into d beta this is nothing but our 1 by 2 pi x of e raised to j omega modulation our periodic convolution with y of e raised to j omega. This is the equation you will be getting off. Okay, this is about the proof for the modulation. Then the next property is of Pascal's theorem. In the same way what we already uh, done for the Fourier transform, here also the same, uh, same steps are going to be uh, remaining only thing is there we done with the for a continuous term here we have to go for the discrete time if x of n the dtft is going to be x of e raised to j omega then summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity x of n whole square is going to be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi integration 2 pi of mod of x of e raised to j omega whole square d omega taking this as equation 1 in equation 1 x of e raised to j omega mod of square is known as energy density spectrum of the signal x of n then summation n varying from minus into plus infinity x of n whole square is the energy of the signal x of n then proof is going to be we will consider for the energy equation e is equal to summation n varying from minus into plus infinity x of n mod whole square and x of n it is consisting of both real and complex conjugate values i can write as x of n x star of n complex conjugate function okay then for this i am writing the equation of basic equation that is 1 divided by 2 pi integration varying from 2 pi r minus pi 2 plus pi x star of e raised to j omega e raised to minus j omega n d omega then interchanging the summation and integration here changing this therefore i can write as 1 divided by 2 pi integration 2 pi x star of e raised to j omega summation n varying from minus into plus infinity x of n e raised to minus j omega n d omega then 1 divided by 2 pi integration 2 pi this what i can write this equation we already used this equation many times that is the basic equation of dtft i can write as x of e raised to j omega d omega then 1 divided by 2 pi as it is integration 2 pi this is nothing but x of e raised to j omega mod of whole square i can write into d omega this is about the proof that some from minus infinity x of n whole square is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi integration 2 pi mod of x of e raised to j omega whole square d omega this is about the proof for the Pascal's equation in both the ft for uh, and dtft this will be very important it will be asking for 4 to 5 marks in the exam okay then about the symmetry if x of n the dtft is going to be x of e raised to e raised to j omega then x of n the real part dtft x of x star of e raised to j omega is equal to x of e raised to minus j omega and x of n 
if it is of real and even then dtft is going to be real and even imaginary part it's going to be zero means it is consisting of purely real value then when x of n is of a real and odd real term it will be zero and x of e raised to j omega it is of a purely imaginary part now we have to prove this then if x of n is of a real then x is, x of n is equal to the x star of n this is basic uh, equation we know this then let x of n is consisting of both even uh, part of the x of n and odd part of the x of n the for the reason i can write as x of n is equals to x e of n plus x odd of n the dtft is going to be x of e raised to j omega is equal to x real part of e raised to j omega plus j into x imaginary part of e raised to j omega taking this as equation 1 then x of n is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi integration minus pi to plus pi x of e raised to j omega into e raised to j omega n d omega taking this as equation 2 then taking complex conjugate on both side therefore i can write as x star of n is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi integration minus pi to plus pi x star of e raised to j omega into e raised to minus j omega n d omega then x star of n is equals to 1 divided by 2 pi integration minus pi to plus pi x star of e raised to j omega here the my sign is taken here therefore e raised to j minus omega n d omega comparing equation 1 and 2 i can write as x of n is going to be dtft is going to be x star of e raised to minus j omega minus j omega that is nothing but x of n is equals to x star of n this is equation taken as equation 4 from this i can write as x of e raised to j omega is also equal to the x star of e raised to minus j omega based on this observe here based on comparing equation we are uh, we can write that then take a com complex conjugate on both side here you will be getting as x star of e raised to j omega complex conjugate two times it's going to be cancelling of x of e raised to minus j omega you will be getting then from equation if i go for the x of minus n if i am substituting then it's going to be x of e raised to x e of minus n plus x odd of minus n the odd term is going to be minus even we even only right e raised to x of e n minus x of odd of n you will be getting then x of minus n is going to be equal to x e of n minus x o of n the dtft is going to be x of e raised to minus j omega is equal to x star of e raised to j omega then that is equals to when it is consisting of real and imaginary i can write as x r of e raised to j omega minus j x i of e raised to j omega that is equation 5 then adding equation 1 and 5 i can get as 2 times x e of n e dtft is going to be 2 times x r of e raised to j omega that is nothing but x e of n dtft is going to be real part even when it is a, a given function is of even part then you will be getting only of the real values that is x r of e raised to j omega therefore dtft of a real and even sequence is purely real then subtracting the equation 5 from the equation 1 if i do that what i will be getting two times x odd of n dtft is going to be imaginary part you will be getting therefore 2 into j x i of e raised to j omega two to get cancels then you will be getting as x of n dtft is going to be j into x i of e raised to j omega therefore what i can tell you from this dtft of a real and odd sequence is of a purely imaginary okay this is all about the properties